Good. Amen. At this time, just everybody remain standing. Let's honor the most senior member of our church. Amen. Amen. Mr. West. Amen. Amen. 94 years young. And he's going to have a few marks about black history. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm so happy that yeah. you invited me to say a few words. Yeah. And when we talk about black history, we have four gentlemen. We talk every Sunday after church about black history, <laughs> how we came up, what it meant to us as growing up as young men. Brother Benjamin, Brother Jones, Brother Martin, and Brother Spears over there. So we, there's a conversation after church each day. We talk about church, what church have done for us, how the Lord has brought us yes. through, and everything. So we, the four of us talk about black history every Sunday. Amen. So <laughs> black history is not, I mean, we understand the word history. When you go to the doctor, they say, they ask you about your history. If you take your car to the automobile show, they ask you about history. So history is what has been done in the past. Yes. And so we take the past and try to formulate the present. Amen. So that's about the size of it. So just about everyone here understand what it's all about. I'm just exchange, I'm sharing words with you. Not, it's, you're well aware yes. of all the things that has transpired Amen. and what is being done today. So thank you for the privilege of saying a few words to you. And, I, and as I say, the four of us every Sunday is talk about black history. So we sit there and Brother Spears, we, we talk about his bro gang. Brother Joan, we talk about this. Brother Martin, he, understand a little of it. <laughs> oh. So thank you, thank you. And thank you, Elder. Well, the pastor and I, we have brief conversations. And he's a very busy man, but sometimes he share his busy time with me. <laughs> and so, Thank you, Pastor King. Amen. That's that's living history right there. That's living history. Amen. Yeah. 
And so I was brought up in church, and I don't used to say, I can't wait till I get going. I ain't going to church no more. No more like that. I'm not. But I'm so happy to be in church. Yes. I am just so, so happy to be in church. And I want to thank everybody that's participating in this program. It's not a program. It's a celebration. Yes, yes. It's a celebration. And I am like on fire, I think. Yes. <laughs> Psalm number 137, verse 1 through 6 says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept. When we remember Zion, we hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive asked us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forgot you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy, may the Lord add a blessing to the hearing reading and practice of his word. Father God, now let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our thought this morning is to keep the faith and don't stop singing. The words of our texts are the words of a nation of people who have been vanquished by the armies of the Babylonian Empire. And their beloved and holy city, Jerusalem, uh, has been sacked and set afire. The beautiful temple that was built by King Solomon has been desecrated and left in ruins. And the once proud nation of Israel has been placed in chains and marched away as slaves into a strange and foreign land. The very proud people who were known throughout the world for their beautiful songs of worship to the God of their salvation now have been reduced to listening to the taunts and ridicules of their captors. <laughs> The Babylonians had listened carefully to Israel's songs of praise as they studied their enemy. They heard them as they sang one of the Psalms of David. They listened as the Israelites sang, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came, <coughs> Upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. <clears throat> Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident, David says. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, Psalm 27, verses 1 through 4. 
The Babylonians listened and they remembered. And in celebration of their great victory over Israel, their captors mocked the people of God with a cruel request, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And then the people of God replied with a question, a question that I believe was directed more to themselves than to their captors. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You see, this sad account of the people of God finds them at, at, at one of the lowest points in their rich history. But it lends itself to the occasion of celebration of a people enslaved in America from Africa and brought to this country in chains. And I would like to suggest to you that upon a closer examination, there is a message of hope hidden in this text. A message that I hope that you will hear and share with you. The psalmist says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. The psalmist records the question, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I want to encourage the people of God this morning to keep the faith and don't stop singing. Would you tell somebody next to you or across the aisle or whatever, keep the faith and don't stop singing. You know, I, I listened to Brother Malachi over here playing the drums on Sunday morning. You see, drums have played a central role in Africa throughout history. And generally, the sound of the drum was an announcement such as a declarations of war or some kind of celebration, a wedding or whatever. And the use of mu African music and dance and instruments on the slave ships allowed slaves to preserve their homeland traditions. You see, dance became an integral part of the daily lives of the slaves in North America. And during Saturday night dance, the slaves would dance to the beat of the drum and talk about the freedom that had, they had once they possessed when they were once in Africa. Dance practices of the slaves became intertwined with their survival and their resistance. And sometimes we wonder why the church sings today and why we dance is because the Lord is our deliverer. Yeah. Don't stop dancing either. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop singing. Yeah. Some of us, our feet have gotten a little heavy and we can't move. That means we need to exercise a little bit more. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. But not only don't stop uh, singing, don't stop dancing and keep the faith. First of all, I need you to hear me when I say keep the faith. Because it was that faith that kept those drums beating in the night as the slaves sang. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Going home to be with the Lord. Swing low, sweet chariot on. Coming to carry me home. These are the songs of the slave because they believed that God would, would deliver them from their oppressor. Amen. Keep the faith. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you're praying with yeah. me this morning. Yeah. Keep on singing. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see, in verse 2, I read, we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And, and so the words of the psalmist creates for us a very visual image of weeping, the weeping saints standing at the edge of the river in, in the midst of weeping willow trees. And their heads were hung in shame. Their heads were hung in defeat. And he says, there they hang their hearts. Because it was there at the river's edge among the widows in the mood of spiritual dejection and defiance that they decided to hang up their instruments of music and worship. And those who, who made the decision were the, called minstrels or the musicians. And like Brother Smiley who played so skillfully this morning, uh, they were the music makers who played for the singers and 
aided the worshipers in the temple. They had once provided a valuable service to the people of God and the work of the Lord. And two things caught my attention as I studied this scripture. And they both speak of a future hope for the people of the Lord. Because instinctively, these prisoners brought their harps with them. They brought their drums with them on their march to captivity. On that slave ship and that dark passage across the Atlantic Ocean, they made them play their drums and they made the women dance and they were nude and they danced and they danced and sometimes they were raped and then thrown over into the ocean. Half of the cargo never made it to the new world. But they kept on singing. They kept on dancing in the midst of their oppression. So somewhere in the back of their minds, and even though their city and their homes had been destroyed, and they were taken from their land, even though they were now in chains, being led away into a strange land, they remained hopeful that the time would come when they would be able to play the Lord's songs once again even in a strange land. And even in times of sorrow and mourning, I want to let you know the Lord will make a way Amen. somehow. I said the Lord will make a way somehow. I said the Lord will make a way somehow. Because somewhere along their journey, the daily diet of the enemy's verbal assaults and insults came uh, against them in the name of the Most High God, Jehovah, and it took its toll upon them. And in response to the taunts of their captors, these minstrels, these musicians, decided, I'm going to hang up my instruments of music. But you know what I noticed in this scripture? That they did not destroy their harps or throw their drums away. They hung them up and they set them aside. There is in one of the museums here in America, one of the lasting drums of one of the uh, slave uh, uh, captors and, and uh, those who were captured and enslaved, one of the drums in a from Africa in Achan, and, and it's a beautiful drum, and it still remains as a symbol of our deliverance. Somebody played the drums in the middle of the night. Somebody played the drums and said, look up, look up at the stars, look up at the heavens, yeah. because the, the, the train is coming. Yeah. The train is coming, so you better be ready to get on board. Yeah. So they wrote a song and said, get on board, children. children. Get on board, little children. Get on board, little children. Amen. And so they understood all of these narratives and all of this music. We had music to help us. Yeah. That's why I sing today. There's something about a song, oh my God, that will just help you through to the darkest times of your life. Again, somewhere, they knew that God was going to deliver them because discouragement and disappointment have a way of catching and crashing into your life, catching you off guard and causing such a disruption that your initial reaction is to pack it up and to quit. But don't do it. Don't quit. Because these ministers of music may have hung up their harps, but they never intended to stop fighting and stop singing for freedom. Because their harps may have been silenced, their drums had may have been silenced for a season, but they left the door open for the time when they would be able to make music in the service of the Lord. Yeah. God will always leave the door of opportunity open for service. God will always provide an opportunity for us to keep on singing. God will always provide an opportunity for us to give him praise. Ah, uh, so keep on praising the Lord. So keep the faith. You're going to help me this morning. Somebody shout, keep the faith. You see, now in verse 4, I'm almost there. We hear the words of the singers. They ask the question both of their captors and of themselves in the scripture says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The request of their captors, the slavers, was an 
unreasonable request as it was insulting to them. How could they who had reduced us to slavery and dragged us in chains from our beautiful land and privileges in our homes expect us to sing one of our sacred songs to please them who were their enemies both to us and to our God? How insulting could they be? How dare they ask us to sing when my hands are locked in chains? And how could they now expect laughter and entertainment from people in a state of poverty and oppression? And I want us to understand, people want to know why blacks sing a smile all the time. That has been passed down to us because they made us laugh. They made us smile when we didn't want to smile. We didn't want to laugh because the pain was in the inside. Yeah. Why are you grinning? You know I'm grinning, but you don't know the pain. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. You don't know the suffering. Sometimes you're going through trials. Sometimes you're going through tests. And somebody asks somebody ask you, why are you smiling? Yeah. You don't know what's going on in my inside. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what I've been through. Yeah. But sometimes the saints walk up to you and say, why you, you seem so happy, but you don't know. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in my inside. Yeah. There's some hurt and there's some pain there. But how do we know that God will wipe away all of it? You see, the songs, the songs required of the singers were songs that were appointed by God and were to be sung only to his honor and his glory and in his service. They were not even Israel's songs. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song? Oh, y'all didn't read that, did you? It was not their songs, it was the Lord's songs. Yes, yes. I sing because I'm happy. I, I sing because yes. I'm free. I His eye is on the spirit. Yes, I and I know that the Lord watches me. Aren't you glad about it? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. They were the Lord's songs. They belong to the Lord. How then could they be sung? How could these songs be sung in a strange land? You don't even know my language. Yeah. You don't even know my tongue. Yeah. How are you asking me to sing for you? They didn't even understand what they were singing about. Hallelujah. But like the minstrels, these singers had no choice in the matter. Like the slaves on the slave ship to America, they had no choice in the matter. Yeah. Yeah. And they responded with their silence. But while they refused to sing in a strange land and for the benefit of an unworthy audience, they did not declare that they would never sing again. So often when trials, when temptations and discouragements show up, the enemy comes to steal our joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And for the child of God, I want you to know your song is the source of your praise. I didn't y'all didn't hear me this morning. I said, your song yeah. is the source of your praise. Yeah. Try it again, Pastor. Yeah. They'll get it. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank your song yeah. is the source of your praise. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank I'm going to keep, keep, keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. Your song yeah. is the source of your praise. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm a, Holy Spirit said, don't leave it. The Holy Spirit said, your song. Yeah is the source of your praise. So what I'm trying to tell you, sing anyhow. You may sing out of key. You may sing in between the keys. You may not know the song or you've never heard the song before. But sing anyhow. Make up your own song. Oh, oh, some of y'all, y'all don't even know how to make it. Make up your own. Have you ever just walked to the house and just start singing and make up your own song? Yeah. Through your own experience. Yeah. I've got a praise on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Yeah. You see, also your song is, a, is the verbal expression of your joy and your connectedness to God. Uh, your joy and your relationship with God. I sing because I am happy. I sing because I am free. I have a connection with God. 
Because when you sing the Lord's song, those around you are offered a glimpse into the relationship that you have with God. Sing! So somebody else can feel the Spirit of God. Sing! Until people will get their behinds up off the pews and start singing along with you. Uh, they will see this love affair, if you will. This love affair between the Creator and His creatures. You ask me a lot of times why Pastor likes to sing all the time. Because He's the joy of my salvation. He's the joy of my salvation. You see, I came up in a house uh, uh, full of singers like Brother Lyons did. My mother played the piano and she literally could read music, sheet music. And uh, she was a trained musician. And so I came up in that kind of house. My dad could play. He played the banjo. My sister could play. My sisters, all of them can play. All, and so music was all in the house. And so all I could hear was music and singing. But it was because of what God had done for us. And sometimes we would just sit around in the evening time and just sing to one another. Songs were just resonating through the house until it went on to the outside of the house. Somebody walking by could hear they singing in there. That's Pastor King's house. Oh, but like Israel, honey, I gotta, I gotta get her to the airport. But let me give this little bit, huh? because like Israel, our enemy also comes to taunt us, and, and, and like times like these that all of us are going through right now. And unlike the Israelites who had no choice in the matter uh, when they were taunted by the enemy to sing. Uh, you do have a choice in the matter. Poverty, disappointment, and even death may have darkened your door, but you do have a choice in the matter. You may be still shedding tears of defeat and frustration and hopelessness, but even now, you do have a choice whether or not to sing. It's up to you. You see, Israel's enemy was Babylon. Our enemy is the devil. And the devil seeks to kill and steal and destroy. And like the land of Babylon, death and defeat are strangers in the land. And death and defeat are foreign to the people of God who are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And like Babylon, the kingdoms of this world attempts to invade our lives and take our loved ones, disrupt our family units, and, and now taunts us with the questions, where is your God now through all of these trials? What happened to your songs of praise now that you're going through your trials? I dare you, you have a choice. I will not be defeated. I'm going to sing anyhow. I will not let the devil have victory over my life. I do have a choice whether or not to sing. And I choose the same. Oh my God. You see, Israel's silence was a form of protest and resistance. Our silence would be a victory for the enemy if we did so. So don't stop singing because Israel could not sing because their joy had been destroyed. They could not sing because they were out of their element and they were captive in a strange land. And captivity has a way of paralyzing both the hand and the mouth. But the minstrels could not play and the singers could not sing. But Nehemiah 8 and 10 says this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, I'm going to have to work on you sanctified folk. <laughs> because that's a praise moment right there. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Y'all just sitting there saying, yeah, uh-huh, okay. Uh. My God, what's wrong with us? The joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> I do have a choice. I said, I do have a choice. Yes. I do have a choice. Yes. I do have a choice. Yes. I said, I do have a choice. Yes. So don't stop singing. Yes. Don't stop praising yes. God. Yes. <laughs> so here is my close on this. Don't forget Jesus. Yes. So those of you who are called to deliver God's word, yes. don't stop fighting. Yes. 
Don't stop preaching. And those of you who are new creatures in Christ Jesus, don't stop singing. Don't stop praising. Don't stop dancing. Hallelujah. But in verse 5 and 6, we hear the resolve. We hear the resolve of the Israelites. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skills. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. Ah, oh, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You see, the minstrel declared that even though his heart was hanging and silent, he did not forget how to play and to serve God. And even though Jerusalem lay in ruins, he did not forget the joys and the glory of praising God. What you trying to say, Pastor? Don't forget what the Lord has done for you. Don't forget how God made a way for you. Don't forget how God opened doors for you. Keep the faith. I said keep the faith. Don't stop singing. Don't stop dancing. Oh my God. Pastor. Pastor. Oh, Pastor. I've got arthritis. I can't, I can't do it like I used to. You might not, but you can bounce. Uh, sister. Sister Eleanor called me the other day and says, Pastor, uh, we're going to start a, a, a line dancing class in the church, uh, uh, Christian line dancing and whatnot. I said, I'm going to be there. I said, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be first in line. I'm going to learn my little steps from side to side. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go forward. Amen. They got a new African thing out now. They go, I'm going to learn how to do that one too. Amen. Yeah. See, the problem with us, we didn't got rusty and set out. Well, we don't, we don't, you know, that's what they used to do. You so lazy, my Lord. Get up and give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Uh, I told Brother Martin, I'm, I'm, I'm really serious, I've got to close, but uh, I was, he was in the auditorium and I was, I told him I would take the material up to uh, the balcony to, for Brother Darren so he can have the music and whatnot for today. And do you know what? I was out of breath on the second flight. <laughs> I said, that's not good. I said, that's, that does not make any sense. It's because we have been sitting down too long. And we need to get up and move. Amen. It's because the Bible is full of praising, right? The Bible is full of singing. The Bible is full of dancing. What happened to our praise? My God. Oh. But the singers bowed, Brother Smiley, that should he ever forget the city of Jerusalem, and what Jerusalem represented to the people of God. He said, let me lose my voice and all of its power, all of its melody, all of its praise. They were devoted to Jerusalem and vowed never to forget her. If only Israel had been as devoted to God as they were to the city of Jerusalem. Because in the midst of their calamity and suffering, God was still there to remind them, I am the Lord thy God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I brought you through the Red Sea. Yes. <laughs> yes. Y'all don't really understand that. He said, not over the Red, through the Red Sea. Because when the Lord told Moses, Brother Smiley, to stretch out the rod, uh -huh. the waters departed. Yes. And they walk through. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't hear me. Yeah. I said they walk through yeah. the Red Sea. Yeah. The waters on every 
every side. God made a lane through the waters. What you trying to say, Pastor? He will open the windows of heaven for you. He will pour out blessings for you. Oh, yes, he will. Uh, don't forget God. Don't forget what the Lord has done for you. Don't forget how he's blessed you. Keep the faith. Don't stop singing. Don't stop dancing. Brother Smiley, my message to you and Brother Malachi, y'all just keep doing what you're doing. They'll get it after a while. Amen. Amen. We had a sister called Mother Hayes Harris. And she used to sing a song, traveling shoes, Lord, God on my traveling shoes. She was an old woman, traveling shoes, Lord, God on my traveling shoes. Traveling shoes, Lord, God on my traveling shoes, Lord. Now, now while she was singing this, she would start moving out of the pulpit after she was preaching and go and grab people's hands and say, come on, travel with me. By the time she was finished, the entire church here at 58 and Telegraph was up marching around the building, singing that song, traveling shoes, got on my traveling shoes. You let me try that now. Y'all just give me a high five. Keep on going, Pastor. Everybody stand. Traveling shoes, Lord. Got on my track. Traveling shoes, Lord. Traveling shoes, Lord. Got on. Traveling shoes, Lord. Got on. Believe I travel now. Got on. Father God, the battle is not ours, but the Lord's. We thank you, God, for just this opportunity to share a word with your people, to encourage them to keep fighting. Keep fighting. We are overcomers. To never stop singing and never stop praising you, even though it may seem hard and difficult, but we're going to keep on giving you praise. The enemy comes to disrupt us and to take away our praise, but he can't do it because we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, God, because I still have a song. Thank you, God, because I still have a praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. And I want you to bless your people and encourage them on today in every way to just to keep their hands lifted up and their mouths lifted up in praise. And again, we just bless you, Lord Jesus. And I pray right now for those who are watching and those who are participating in this service today, if there's someone that does not know you in the pardon of their sins, I pray, Father God, that you would touch their hearts now in Jesus' name and give them a new song, a new praise in their mouth even a praise unto our God in Jesus' name. And we love you and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.